when I started looking into what's going on with the boomers, I have this to say to all of you, which is from my point of view as a boomer, is you guys are, watch my lips. How good was Robert Kiyosaki? Actually, in this video, we are going over his books, company, and personal story. Everybody knows Rich Dad Poor Dad, the book that Robert Kiyosaki wrote in 1997. Till today, there are people buying his books in multiple languages. This book teaches you about the assets and the value of investing that it can have on your life in terms of personal life and financial freedom. So uh, for those who are listening, uh, debt is a four letter word for most people. There are many people in my position, so-called financial gurus, who say live totally debt free. And there's other people who say cut up your credit cards. And you know that's good advice for certain types of people. So you should definitely cut up your credit cards if you don't know, you can't control your spending. You should definitely. But I don't know how people live without credit cards. I don't know. He didn't stop there though. After the massive success of the book, people saw that there was an opportunity to produce a cash cow out of this concept. But we will come back to that later. Directly after the success of Rich Dad Poor Dad, he bought out the cash flow quadrant which teaches you to follow your life path instead of the traditional school system. He does refer a lot to the story from the first book. Here were my first frowning eyebrows. The book went on in teaching the importance of the emotional and spiritual health. He makes the common example where people aren't happy with their jobs, but they have to keep on working to provide for the family and pay the bills. A cash flow quadrant explains the concept of the EBSI concept, where E stands for employee, B for business, S for self-employed, and I for investing. A very important diagram my rich dad showed me when I was a little boy was a diagram known as a cash flow quadrant. And the quadrant is made up of the four different people who make up the world of business. So my rich dad said, in the world of business, there's E's. And E stand for employees. An employee, he says, you can always tell who they are by their core values. And what the employee, whether the president or the janitor of the company, will always say the same words. The words are, I'm looking for a safe, secure job with benefits. That's what makes them an employee, because their core values are security. The other, other one of the four is the S, or the small business owner or the self-employed. And again, their core values will cause them to use the same words, which are, if you want it done right, do it by yourself. S means they're also solo. They generally one person act or they operate by themselves. On the right side of the quadrant are the B's. And what Rich Dad said the B stood for was big business, or like Bill Gates. Forbes defines big business as 500 employees or more. And their words are different. They say, I'm looking for a good system, a good network, and the smartest people I know to help run my business. So they're unlike the S, they don't want to run the company by themselves. They want smart people to run their companies for them. And then the fourth of the quadrant is the I, and I stands for investor. These are people who have money work hard for them. The book does bring up some controversial statements that being an employee is taking away your freedom, happiness and success. For some people, safety and predictability are a fine place to be in. On the other hand, of course, there will be people who want to take the risk in life and give it a shot towards financial freedom. Where business and investing will be the main factors to make freedom with money possible. In these topics, it always sounds great and fantastic at first, but if everybody wants the same, why do so little people have this independence? In order to get financial freedom and the life that comes with it, you need to follow a purpose and make a business out of it. To start investing today and buying stocks or other assets to generate some money. In the quadrant, you can be in two or all four of them at the same time. There are no rules and I have one quote from Warren Buffett here for you to give you an idea of this concept. If you only have one income stream, you're one step away from being poor. The quadrant has a lot of psychology in how you think and I'm going to talk like all of the four quadrants in an interview. 
So what the rich dad is telling that words that people are using determine in which quadrant they belong or where they are at the moment. Hi sir, good afternoon. Uh, I'm looking for a stable income and with a lot of safety and a lot of benefits. Hi sir, I'm glad to be here. My hour rate is 80 bucks an hour. Hi sir, I'm looking for somebody who can replace me in my business. How is your situation? Hi sir, I recently did some research on the market and I'm looking for the right ROI and my standard is 6.5%. I'm willing to invest for the right knowledge if you can bring me to an 8% of return from my investment in the future. Now that's very, very important. My poor dad was a PhD, the head of education in the state of Hawaii, and he really stressed at the importance of academic education, and it is. Unfortunately, being the superintendent of education son, I wasn't the brightest kid around, and I did flunk out of high school twice because I had a hard time reading and writing. Now, I did graduate from college. I do have a Bachelor of Science degree, but I'm not very good at academic education. Professional education is where they become you know, a doctor or a mechanic or a web programmer or whatever you do. So professional education is very important. And my mother wanted me to be a doctor, but because my academic grades were so bad, she says, well, I guess you won't be a doctor. And the third type of education that's required, especially today, to be successful is financial education. And unfortunately, our school systems do not teach us much about money. For some reason, our school systems seem to think, you know, that money might be the root of all evil or something. Yet to be successful in the world today, financial education is extremely important. Because of this lack of financial education, we see the rich getting excessively rich. Today we have kids who are 20 years old who are billionaires, and guys my age, you know, after working 40 years, have nothing to show for it. So the gap between the rich and the poor is dangerously extreme. So what is wealth? Because everybody talks about it, but what is wealth now exactly? Wealth is the amount of time or days that you can survive without working and still holding on to your lifestyle. After becoming well known in mostly America, he started to make a friend size out of the rich dad, poor dad formula by educating others into coaches and recruiting clients for their businesses to become eventually marketing machine and cash cow. These seminars are all over the world now with their trainings and they cost thousands of dollars. Very impressive how big the reach has become from a story what started off with a kid having a dad and a stepfather, mostly because of the skill of storytelling and the company called Mway. If you go through the books, it is about a couple choosing to be wealthy and how they struggle to get there. It eventually results in disbelief for the people around them, but you just get hooked and inspired when you read it. I love it. What really surprised me in my eyes is that the genius is really in the board game he brought. Yes, a board game, the cash flow game. Why is it so genius? Most of the board games are for entertainment like Pandemic or Monopoly. This one actually makes you think about decisions that you also have to make in real life. Is it confronting or fun? Let me know in the comments. Dad taught me so people can have fun learning. So this here is the cash flow game. There's actually two game boards. This is the first one. The first thing here you notice there's two tracks. This is called the fast track and this is called Zerat Race. And most people are trapped in Zerat Race. So if you follow the advice of go to school and get a safety secure job and buy a house and have kids, you get stuck inside this rat race and you never get out. So the object of the cash flow game is to increase your financial IQ so you can get out of the rat race to have more passive income so you don't have to work anymore, so your money's working hard for you. Then you get on the fast track. Now there really does exist a fast track. In 1933, a man named Joseph Kennedy, father of President John Kennedy, head of the, I think it was the SEC, they declared that the fast track was only for rich guys and women. So you had to be a rich person to invest on the fast track. So today, the investments I do are not in the rat race. I don't buy stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. I invest out here. So to invest out here, number one, you have to be rich, and number two, you should be financially educated. The reason so many pro athletes and movie stars lose their money is they have the money, but they don't have the financial education. So they get taken by some of the biggest land sharks on planet Earth who operate out here. So if you're gonna be out here, you need two things, money and education. So that's what this game board is designed to do, and it's to assist you to get out of the rat race and onto the fast track.
So th Does this guy ever stop? He brought out a book with the president of the United States. But back then Donald Trump wasn't president yet. But he was a big deal. In their book, We Want You to Become Rich, the two financial heavyweights come together, which is a smart idea for your marketing. Negotiation will never change. It's always going to be the art of the deal. It's always going to be, you can pick up that book in a thousand years, it's not going to change. It's going to be the same. And if I could say, you know, like, what was 80, 1986, the art of the deal came out, and I was flat broke. So Kim and I ran out, and we saw you, you know, t talking about your book. And so Kim and I ran out, and we bought your book, and I said, wow. And, and that's why it was such an honor to, to come and talk to you and all this, because that book really straightened me out. When, when I was so down, the art of the deal says I can still think bigger. It doesn't cost yeah. any money to think that's bigger. Great. And so that was, it is what you'd say, a very powerful book. I just love the story of the woman rink, and Kim loves the story of Norma. You know, Norma right. became her sure. star after sure. that. Here we have a little background history where Robert got his MBA in Hawaii while he served in the military and he eventually got honored for his air support during the war in Vietnam. After school he took a sales job at Xerox. On the side he started his own business called Reaper who are producing wallets. They went bankrupt. After this event he started his second company, a fashion brand for rock lovers, also went bankrupt in 1980. After these two companies, he decided to co-found an educational company for entrepreneurs. In the last two years of this journey in education, he produced his first book, I Want to Become Rich and Not Go to School. He created success with his book and meanwhile, he broke up with his wife and married Kim. Kim became Kim Kiyosaki. She has a successful clothing business. In this process, she actually met Robert. Later, Robert and Kim co-found the cash flow technologies to educate people around the world. In 2006, he wrote the book, rich woman. Kim is a multimillionaire who wants to inspire women about independence, freedom and finances. For example, when I started investing in 1989, I started with a little two bedroom, one bath house. Our good, part, our good friend and partner Kenny McElroy started with a little tiny condo. Robert started with a condo in Maui. We started small, we learn, we make mistakes and then you move on to the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. And that's what we want to teach in the cash flow game. So how good was Robert Kiyosaki? Actually, with two business failures, you can say you learned a lot and you want to teach that to other people about your mistakes. His friend side's model of cash flow and rich dad, poor dad, are amazing if you look at the scale that it has reached over time. I hope you learned something from this video. Give me that like, it helps my channel. If you want to stick around for more videos, click the subscribe button. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.